Hi everyone and welcome to this lecture on boreal forests and the fire regime of the Western Cordillera in British Columbia and the Yukon territories of Western Canada. This presentation will focus on identifying what a boreal forest is, where the boreal Cordillera is located, dominant plant and animal species of the ecoregion, details of this ecoregion's fire regime, current issues and threats the boreal Cordillera is facing, as well as management practices of these vital forested lands. Join me now as we explore these topics further. The boreal forest, or taiga, is the world's largest land biome. It is typically comprised of coniferous tree species such as pine, spruce, and fir, with some broadleaf species such as poplar or birch. The circumboreal belt of forest represents about 30% of the global forest area, and it contains more surface freshwater than any other biome, and has large tracts of unmanaged forests across high latitude regions of Canada. From a biological perspective, boreal forests are defined as forests growing in high latitude environments where freezing temperatures occur for six to eight months and in which trees are capable of reaching a minimum height of five meters and a canopy cover of at least 10%. Boreal forest ecosystems have evolved under the constraints imposed by a short growing season and severe winters during which snow cover may last for several months at a time. About one third of their extent is underlain by permafrost. Most boreal landscapes are characterized by a low diversity of tree species, of which gymnosperms, such as abies, larix, pinus, and picea species, usually dominate, with varying proportions of angiosperms, such as populus, betula, and ulnus species. Consisting of extensive mountains and valleys separated by wide lowlands, this ecozone spans approximately 450,000 square kilometers occupying the southern Yukon and northern half of British Columbia. It is bordered by the coast mountains to the west and extends north from the Montane Cordillera to the Mackenzie and Selwyn Mountains beyond Dawson City and Kino in the Yukon. To the east, it reaches as far as the Peace River. The Boreal Cordillera Ecozone encompasses the St. Elias, Kina, Cassiar, Aminica, and northern Rocky Mountains as well as the Stikine, Yukon, and Klondike Plateaus. The climate is an interior subalpine type, and the mean annual temperature is negative 0.7 to negative 0.3 degrees Celsius. Average temperatures top 10 degrees Celsius for only one month a year, although up to three months are possible at medium elevations. Mean annual precipitation ranges from 460 to 700 millimeters, with 35 to 60 percent of that falling as snow. Winters are long and cold. Summers are brief and cool. Moist Pacific air frequently causes sudden, often violent storms during the summer. More stable air masses usually prevail during the winter, but cold spells can be broken by warm Chinook winds. Above the tree line, at elevations higher than 1,000 to 1,400 meters, alpine weather is the norm. This area is cold, windy, and snowy, and characterized by low temperatures during the growing season and a short frost-free period. Mean annual temperatures range from negative 4 to 0 degrees Celsius. Frost can occur at any time, and the average temperature remains below freezing for 7 to 11 months each year. Mean annual precipitation ranges from 700 to 3,000 millimeters, 70 to 80 percent of which falls as snow. Many high elevation areas, such as the St. Elias Mountains, have perpetual ice and snow cover. Discontinuous permafrost with low ice content occurs throughout this ecoregion, usually confined to lower north-facing slopes. The Northern Cordillera Forest is a remote and wild ecoregion, but surprisingly only 9% of it is protected. Important protected areas include various provincial parks and wilderness areas. Some 74% of the habitat outside protected areas remains intact. The opportunities remain to greatly increase protection before human activities expand. Lower elevations are generally forested by white spruce and subalpine fir. A pattern apparent in many valleys is intermittent to closed forest cover of white spruce with variable amounts of pine and aspen in the valley bottoms and on lower slopes. Closed boreal forests at lower, warmer elevations include white and black spruce, lodgepole pine, and some paper birch as well as aspen. Lodgepole pine and aspen regenerate following fires, which is the principal form of renewal for forests in this ecoregion. The best forest growth is associated with white spruce on fine textured, moist soil near wetlands and water. Subalpine fir dominates higher up, especially on northern and eastern slopes, 
where it often forms nearly pure stands. Black spruce, lodgepole pine, and aspen are relatively minor species, although locally abundant. Wildfires are not as common as in adjacent ecozones to the east, although the occasional stand of lodgepole pine, which grows in the aftermath of fires, is not unknown. Upper elevations near tree lines are dominated by deciduous shrubs, mainly scrub birch and willows. Tree species are in stunted or crumholtz form. The most common crumholtz species are subalpine fir, Engelmann spruce, white spruce, mountain hemlock, and white bark pine. Groves of stunted aspen and balsam fir occur at timber lines, usually on southern slopes. Alpine vegetation consists of shrubs, herbs, moss, and lichen, with much of this area totally lacking in vegetation and is dominated by rock, ice, and snow. Wildfire is a significant natural disturbance in Canadian forests. Since the 1990s, wildland fires have burned an average of 2.3 million hectares of forest each year. The annual area burned and the number of large fires is primarily driven by weather conditions conducive to fire. Lightning caused fires are the main disturbance in the Northern American boreal forest. Large fires account for over 85% of the total area burned, but less than 5% of fires. The mosaic landscape of the boreal forest is thus determined not by numerous small fires, but by the infrequent large fires. In the boreal forest, crown fires are the dominant fire behavior, and generally fuel moisture, not fuel accumulation, are the primary determinant of fire behavior. This is because wildfires are propagated primarily by fine fuels, which in closed canopy boreal forests are relatively constant after canopy closure at 15 to 20 years. Wildland fires play a large role in shaping landscape diversity and productivity, as well as affect the carbon flux in forest ecosystems. Coupled with relatively little precipitation and concentrated thunderstorm activity, the Canadian boreal regions experience an average of some 5,000 reported ignitions per year. In the spring, after the snow is gone, but before the vegetation is physiologically active, many fuel types are highly flammable, resulting in an active, if short-lived, spring fire season. Long-crowned conifers, such as black spruce, are interspersed with deep moss layers and peaty soils that often become dry and flammable during summer droughts and during the early fall as vegetation becomes dormant. Despite the large number of fires that occur annually, only approximately 5% of these fires burn an area greater than 200 hectares. Large areas burned in the Canadian and Alaskan boreal forests have been linked during the last four decades to the action and interaction of the Pacific Decadal Oscillation, El Nino Southern Oscillation, and Arctic Oscillation systems. A number of abiotic and biotic factors are likely the causes of contemporary megafires. Some factors that contribute to megafires operate at large spatial scales and disrupt processes linked to the dynamics of wildland fuels. The three factors that best fit this profile are climate change, fire exclusion, and disturbance, collectively forming the megafire triangle. At large temporal scales, megafires usually occur after years of moderate to severe drought. Naturally occurring cycles of climatic variation, such as the PDO, ENZO, AO, and Atlantic Multidecadal Oscillation often drive the frequency and intensity of drought that influences megafire activity worldwide. Over shorter timescales, megafires often occur during high wind events, frequently under hot, dry conditions. Many managers and scientists believe that decades of fire exclusion have increased fuels across landscapes to the point where these are areas that are capable of fostering the largest and most severe fires on record. Both annual area burned and number of large fires are expected to increase. Projected warmer and drier conditions are expected to increase fire season length, annual area burned, and the number of large fires. This increase in annual area burned would mainly result from a rise in fire activity during the months of June, July, and August. Recent studies have used satellite-derived, normalized difference vegetation index time series to explore geographic patterns boreal forests greening and browning. 
A number of these studies indicate that boreal forests are experiencing widespread browning and have suggested that these patterns reflect decreases in forest productivity induced by climate change. Known tree species migration rates during past warming episodes have been shown to be slower than what would be required of present populations to remain intact. Successful poleward migration simply cannot keep pace with the current rate of temperature increase and permafrost melt. Tree mortality due to adaptational limitations may be immediate and locally contained or widespread. Factors contributing to population decline or mortality include strong competitors favoring a warmer and possibly drier climate, reduction in populations of insect pollinators, disruptions in dormancy, induction, or release, changes in control over cone serotony, and changes in seed production, ripening, and dissemination. The results will look something like local level extinctions of some species. Strategic planning for fire management will have to take new fire regimes into account. The new fire regime would affect such aspects of boreal forest structure as age class distribution, species mix, and landscape mosaics, ecotones, as well as forest boundaries. Functional parameters subject to change include biomass production, litter fall, decomposition, organic matter, nutrient turnover rates, as well as carbon sequestration and susceptibility to pathogens or insect attack, all of which have feedback loops to climate change and fire regime through altered fuel moisture, quantity, and configuration. Anticipated increases in fire severity must take into consideration financial requirements necessary to maintain existing or possibly expanded levels of resource protection. Should the prediction of a prolonged fire season come to pass, serious attention will have to be given to the size of the seasonal suppression staff and the tools and equipment needed to carry out the job during a longer and conceivably more severe fire season. Thank you all for joining me, and I look forward to hearing your feedback in the follow-up discussion forum.